Isaiah chapter 10, verse 20. Now we're getting into the Jewish remnant of the Great Tribulation and the attack of Sennacherib. And then the remnant that's going to be from the attack on Babylon. People need to learn that history repeats itself. I just learned today that um, we had two days ago, we had an attack on the White House. People went in there, you know, obvious reasons. There was also an attack made on the White House in the War of 1812. And they were comparing the two and how similar. Listen, Exodus is going to happen again. The children of Israel being brought into the into the promised land by Joshua, by Jesus, Jehovah say, it's going to happen again. You got to know biblical history. You got to know church history. And you got to know the Bible. The Bible is a historic book. And it shall come to pass in that day, there's that expression, in that day, that the raiment of Israel and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more again stay upon him that, that smote them. That's Second Kings 18. And stay upon them is living off the people where they've gone into captivity. When Judah goes into captivity, they're living off Nebuchadnezzar, Belshazzar. Until with the Greek, when the Greeks come and then they allow Israel to go back and build. God tells the, the, the people of Judah, go in there, build, build houses, marry wives, uh, plant vineyards. But they're not going to stay in Babylon. They're not going to stay in, in Assyria. They're not going to stay in Rome. They're not going to stay in America. They're not going to stay in Russia. There's coming a time that the Jewish people will be brought back to the promised land and they'll be under Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, with the church following him. And it won't be Rahab the Gentile that we, we pick up. It will be the Jewish Rendment, the woman of, of Revelation chapter 12. With the body of Christ, not the body of Israel. But shall stay on the Lord, that's the millennium, the Holy One of Israel. Israel right now, today, is living on the world. Israel is using English pounds and American dollars. And they stay in America and celebrate their Passover, which is a violation. They stay in America and keep their Feast of Tabernacles, which is a violation because they're supposed to go to Jerusalem. They're supposed to go to the temple. There's nothing there but the dumb of the rock. The remnant shall return, and they're going to return. And the, 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 the nation of Israel has been set up as the land, World War I, and the people, World War II. But that land ain't their official land recognized by the world through Jesus Christ when it will be totally their land with no enemies in it for a thousand years. Listen, all the enemies of Israel are going to be put into hell one day. And the nation that, that helped the, the Israelites and the Jewish people and the Hebrews in the tribulation, they don't even know what they're doing, but they're, as sheep nations have been judged by Jesus, they will be allowed in the millennium into a land that's given and promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And then the entire 
solar system and earth and planet are going to fold up and they're going to melt with a fervent heat. And I believe the new Jerusalem for the Christian, the new heavens, I believe for the Gentiles, and the new earth given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They shall return even a remnant, not all, a remnant of Jacob, the mighty God. So it's prophecy. And yet we've seen this happen in Ezra and Nehemiah, where a remnant went back and built the temple and built the city. Where was Shadrach, Meshach, and Indigo? Where was Daniel? They didn't go back. For though thy people Israel be as the sand of the sea, that's a lot. I mean, do you realize how many Jewish people there have been since Abraham? Yeah, as much as many Israelites there have been, a remnant of them shall return, not all. You realize it's a sad story that there are children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that are burning in hell today. That rich man that Jesus told us in the Gospel of Luke, uh, is it 15, 14 or 14, 15? He says, Father Abraham. Father Abraham, that means he's a Jew. He's a Hebrew. And he's burning in hell and will burn in hell and will go up into the lake of fire. But they are God's people. And listen, as God's people, if there are Hebrews in hell and the lake of fire, because they didn't obey the word of God, don't think you're going to be a Christian and you're going to walk in New Jerusalem wearing a crown when you didn't deserve a crown. Because if you are put a crown on your head and you didn't deserve the crown by not doing what God told you to do, then God will have to apologize to every Hebrew that's in hell in the lake of fire, and he's not going to do that. Now, a Christian is saved, always saved, will go to glory, go to New Jerusalem. He doesn't lose his soul. But a man that's of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, if he didn't do what he was supposed to do, he'll end up in hell. A Christian will lose rewards. Yet a raiment shall return. And consumption, consumption, that's an interesting word. It's waste, devouring, being diminished. For what? Not obeying God. So if the church people, I'm talking about saved Christians, if they think they can get away with their sins after what God wrote about the Laodicean in church, eh, and they think they're going to be happy, glory, wonderful, great, and doing in the kingdom of God called heaven, New Jerusalem, and, and live in their sins, God would have to apologize to the Hebrews. He casts us off into hell for not obeying him, and God's not going to apologize. Because it'll be a waste. And when a Christian doesn't do right, a Christian doesn't do right, his life at the judgment seat of Christ will be a waste, will be a burn. For the Lord God of hosts shall make a consumption, a waste, even determined in the midst of all the land. Now that land, that land, that land is Israel, never the church. If you got a church that's fighting for land, fighting for the kingdom, Catholic, uh, Congregationalist, Mormonism, you are in the wrong part of the Bible. At no point does God tell the Christian in the church, hey, go go tear down statues, go go set fire at churches, go kill kill anybody. He doesn't say that to the Christian. But we must understand too that Romans thirteen, Paul says God has given that to the government. 
and that the government assigns a a order and say all religions to be treated equal and right and true. That's a violation of Romans 13. The same government that allows murderers to be still living and, and living in a prison system. The Gentile nations under Romans 13 outside the Christian realm called the church and not a building under the government of the first uh, I mean of the new of the Old Testament religions are not supposed to be surviving if you want to be a Christian nation you can't have heathen gods but we'll move on therefore thus saith the Lord God of hosts O my people Hebrews Jews that dwells in Zion, a particular land, a value of land given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to Benjamin. Zion, Jerusalem, if you look in Joshua, is actually given to Benjamin. But the whole region is called Judah. The, 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 the state is called Israel, like you would say America. And Israel and Judah, they weren't supposed to split, but they split during Rehoboam and Jeroboam would be uh, if you were to split America into two. You split America in half. And one region is would be called whatever you call it, but you have Judah. And then you have the individual children of Isaac. You would have the states. Judah, Benjamin, Zebulun, that would be states. If you were like it to what the government we have. And then in those states, there would be cities and capitals. And the capital of Israel is Jerusalem, Zion. Being not afraid of the Assyrian, and we looked at the Assyrian, verse 5, a type of the Antichrist, the Nacarim. But we're also looking at the Antichrist. And when you read about Sennacherib and you look at the history of Sennacherib, you're going to see the future of the Antichrist. And then that type does not go all the way through. Nebuchadnezzar is a type of Antichrist, but Nebuchadnezzar gets right with God. The Antichrist never get rights with God. Never press a type 100%. Joseph is the greatest type of Jesus Christ, but Jesus never would lie and take his brethren and, and put a stolen cup in the back. Jesus would never do that. Never press a type 100%. He shall smite with the rod, and we looked at that rod in verse 5. It's a correction. It's a chastening. It's a father that loves Israel. And that proverb says, if you don't love your child, you don't chasten them. And you got to think about for God to send an invading army, Assyria, into Israel and in parts of Judah, and later on to send Babylon three times into Judah, that is a butt beating. But God gave sure mercies. God, that, that, okay, David, never going to forsake you guys. I'm long suffering. I'm going to put up, come on, I'm going to send prophets. I'm going to send prophets. You're killing the prophets. I'm going to send prophets. You're killing the prophets. You're ignoring the prophets. I'm gonna, and then finally, God said, that it's enough. That's what COVID 19 is. Listen, listen, I, I told you, everyone thought, you know, 2021, life's going to be great. We're not even five days. And 2021, it's uprising. COVID-19 is split into another uh, strand or whatever you want to call it. People are not repenting. Be not afraid of Assyrian. He shall smite thee with a rod. You're going to get it. And shall lift up his staff, that's a shepherd's staff, and the Bible calls him an idol shepherd. He's an antichrist. Jesus is the shepherd of the sheep. John chapter 10, 
Here's a shepherd. Here's an idol shepherd that sets up an idol like Nebuchadnezzar did. And if you don't fall down and worship my idol, Shadrach, 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 Meshach, and go, you're going to go in the fiery furnace, but it won't be the fiery furnace. You will lose your neck. We'll behead you and we'll drink the Jewish blood in a Catholic mass. You see, in the realm of Islam, we'll, we'll, we'll remove your head. And then for the Catholics, we'll drink the Jewish blood for the mass. It would be interesting to see, and I'm not a prophet or anything like that, uh, and this could be speculation, this could be thrown in the garbage, but it would be interesting to see if the Muslim and the Catholics get together. Because the beheading is of the Islam religion, and the drinking of the blood is the Catholic religion. But remember, Catholic had killed Christians left and right. So do the Muslims. And don't take my word for prophecy like that, because I could be wrong. But I'm just comparing the two religions. Lift up the staff against thee after the manner of Egypt. They serve with rigor. Man, they're going to serve with great rigor under the Antichrist. Egypt's coming back. When you look at those plagues of Egypt, look at those plagues among the trumpets, the, the, the vials, and the bowls, and the woes. Yet for a little, for yet a very little while, and the indignation, the anger, shall cease. And my anger shall, my anger in their destruction. There's going to be destruction by God upon his children. For the Christian, there will be destruction at the judgment seat of Christ. Wood, hay, or stubble. Not your soul. And the Lord of hosts shall stir up and scourge. That's a, uh, that's a whipping. That's a punishment for him, the Antichrist, the Assyrian, the Sennacherib. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. God said about that Jew, you curse them, I'll curse you. Sennacherib, I want you to go in there, I want you to beat their butt. I want you to, 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 to punish them, and I'm going to punish you for punishing them because you ought not to done it. You say, well, well, God called Babylon. God, yeah, you know that nation. You know, you know, Sennacherib and and Babylon should say, uh, God, listen, sir, they're your people, and I know you're angry with them. But if you would please, you said you curse them that curse curse them. Lord, they're your people. If you would please pass that on to another nation, where we're not. You're asking us, to, well, we're not going to do it because of what your word says. And Lord God, we, we honor you. and We ask for your blessing, but we're not going. You see, Babylon and Sennacherib did not have to say, yeah, let's go do it. They could have turned God and used God's words and say, no, God, we're not going to do it. You can find somebody else to do it. Think about that. Since the Antichrist and Sennacherib and, and the nations have gone against Israel, God said, I'll curse them and curse you. It's still there. Even though God called them. And they could have replied to say, no. <laughs> Can you imagine what it would have been like for a nation to tell God, no, we're not going to do it because your word says it. Listen, in my prayer life and things with God, I'll quote scripture to God. But you better rightly divine, you better properly quote the proper scripture. And for Sennacherib and Nebuchadnezzar and Babylon, and well, not the Antichrist, he's going to quote scripture, but he's going to quote the wrong scripture, Matthew chapter 4 and Luke chapter 4. But for a nation that God said, I want you to go beat them. Uh-uh, God, they're your people. I know they're my people. You said curse them, that curse I, I, Lord, we want to be on your good side. But in order to do that, you got to get rid of their other gods and idols, and they're not going to do that.
But that would have been interesting to think about. Scourge him. Sennacherib, the Antichrist. According to the slaughter of Midian, again, there's that Midian again, Judges chapter 7 at the Rock of Oreb. Judges chapter 7, we've already read that. We already looked at that. It's going to happen again. Better go back and study that particular pa passage of Scripture. As the rod, there's that rod again, was upon the sea. So he lifted it up against the manner of Egypt. Exodus and Judges. You know, to the Bible believer and the study of the Bible, things are going to happen. Like, yep, written in the book. And then the Christians who don't read their Bible, don't study their Bible, have a perverted Bible. What on earth is going on here? If you were to parachute me, and you're not going to, but if you were to parachute me in the airport, say, all right, jump now. And I would find the five nearest Baptist churches. You, you dropped me 30 times. I'll kill you after one, but you dropped me 30 times. I wouldn't parachute me. But, and I take the five nearest Baptist churches where I land. As they're coming out of the church, I, I, I stop 20. So 100 Baptists, and you drop me out. I forget how many times they say you're going to drop me. 100 Baptists per one drop. I forget how many times I said. And you were to tell them, say, when you get to glory, when we get to heaven, are you going to see the devil? What would be their answer? I'll tell you what my answer would be. Yeah, I'm going to see the devil. In, and according to Revelation chapter 12, we're going to see a war in heaven between Michael and his angels, God's angels, and the devil and his angels, the dragon, SpaceX. And there's going to be a big battle in heaven, an intergalactical battle, not of Luke and, and, and Darth Vader, but of Michael and Lucifer. And we Christians are going to sit back and watch the whole thing. And we're going to watch Satan get his butt kicked out of heaven. And the Bible says we're going to rejoice and be glad. Now, those hundred Christians that you stopped by being airlifted, and I forget how many times I said, imagine this. What? Eh? We love the book of Revelation. Where'd you get that from? I got it out of the book of Revelation. Huh? When I say the Christians going through the Red Sea, huh? and any Christ is going to chase us. What? And it shall come to pass, second advent, in that day. So after the manner of Egypt in the second advent, what was after the manner of Egypt? Israel goes to the Red Sea. That this burden, his burden, shall be taken away from off his shoulder, then we just read about Jesus, the government shall be upon his shoulder, singular. And his yoke from off thy neck. Did not Jesus tell them in Matthew, take my yoke upon you? I'll give you rest. You know that was in Isaiah, right? And you do know that the context of Isaiah 10 and Matthew you do know it's Jewish and not church age. You do know that, right? You're not going to mistakenly go into the book of Matthew and think church age. I was in a church like that. I got out of that church. And the yoke, that's what, take my yoke, Jesus said. 
shall be destroyed because of the anointing. What's the anointing? What does Christ mean? Christ means the anointed one, Jesus. And when Jesus Christ comes back at the second advent, he's going to remove that yoke of the devil and he's going to give them freedom in a, a, a thousand years of no curse except for the serpent and just blessings and glories and to the nation of Israel. And if you would read properly the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and look at it with a Jewish flavor, oh, the Bible you would come to be. Now, verse 28 on, you look at the Battle of Armageddon. Oh, I don't read the Old Testament. And you actually got the root of the Antichrist. Though you really couldn't lay out, because some of these places are not known. He, go back and look at verse 5, the Assyrian, the Antichrist, is come to Ava. I'm going to read through this, I don't understand it fully. He is Pat, he, to Magron, at Michmash. He has laid up his carriages. So then stop them. All right, everyone stop here. They are gone over the passage. They have taken up their lodging at Geba, where they rest. Rama is afraid. Giba of Saul is fled. There's people running and afraid of the Antichrist. I'd be too. Lift up thy voice, O daughter of Gallim. Cause it to be heard unto Laish, O poor Anioth. All right, keep your finger there. Go to, go to Jeremiah 1 1, just real quick. Jeremiah 1 1. The words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, of the priest, Jeremiah is a Levite, of Aaron, that were in Anioth in the land of Benjamin. That's Jeremiah's hometown. That's a land in Benjamin that Benjamin gives to the children of Aaron. Madmaniah. I mean, look at that word. Madmen. And you're talking about the Antichrist. Is removed. See the power of the Antichrist? This whole city is, is moved. Other cities are fear. Other cities are, are fleeing. And they cry out, hey, he's coming. You know, the Paul Revere's story was a lie. The British are coming. That's a lie, they say. But the Bible says in Isaiah 10, they'll be saying, hey, the Antichrist is coming. The Antichrist is coming. You see how the devil's talked to public schools to get your eyes out of the Bible? And the inhabitants of Geban gathered themselves to flee. Let's get out of here. As yet shall he remain in Nob that day, not in that day, that day. He shall shake his hand against the mount of the daughter of Zion. He's on his way to Jerusalem. <laughs> The hill of Jerusalem, if you didn't get that. Zion is a hill in Jerusalem, and the Antichrist is on his way. Behold, the Lord, the Lord Jehovah of hosts, shall lop. That's to remove, to cut, to bow. With terror, like into a tree, I see men as trees walking. Many places in the Bible, men are likened to trees. And the high one, pride, he's the king over the children of pride. And, and the high ones, plural, of stature, giants. 
I want where the giants came from in Genesis. Not the children of Seth, not the, uh, the, 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 the Antichrist and his angels. Sure ain't basketball, guys. Shall be healed down like trees. Now do you understand verse 15? That's the Antichrist attacking everybody and anyone. God, I'm an, I'm a great axe. I'm a great saw. I'm a great rod. And God's like, you wait, you wait to see what I'm going to do, brother. God is going to take down the high ones, the ones of pride and the great. There's going to be giants in the tribulation period. Ooh. And you thought they died out in David's time. Here they are back in Isaiah. We talk about Armageddon. There'll be giants. In our, imagine all the worldly scholar Christians coming back and all. Well, look at the height of those people. I thought they were the children of Seth. And you can say, hey, this, hey I heard Stolly preach, and he said it was going to happen, folks. <laughs> Isaiah 10. <laughs> Didn't you read your Bible? <laughs> Shall be hewn down, and the haughty shall be humbled by who? The Lord of hosts. The Lord. The Lord. Knows the Lord. And knows the capital letters, Lord. Lord of lords. Oh, I wonder who that is. Pride is a sin, and God will break the sin down through Jesus Christ. And he, God shall cut down the thickets of the forest with iron, with a rod of iron. And Lebanon shall fall by a mighty one, Jesus Christ. It's that simple. 